Centrum is the birthplace of human life in Tantalus, and the capital world of the Centrum Assembly. Over the years, the cities of Centrum have merged into a single metropolis, but the world still maintains large areas of water and greenery. In its prime, the planet-spanning city was filled with beautiful architecture, with fusion, wind and solar power plants producing energy. In its current state, the world lies in disrepair. The people are starving, and non-essential structures exist in partial states of deconstruction, as they are salvaged by the Assembly for desperately needed materials. Materials. Food riots are common, and a state of destitution has descended upon most of the residential areas. Even the towering arcologies of the Centrum Parliament District have lost much of their past splendour. Centrum is the only naturally habitable planet orbiting the blue star Centrum Solaris. The planet has two small, rocky moons named Lysane and Lysara, each of which carry numerous dome cities in similar condition to Centrum City itself. The Centrum system also houses a number of planet-side cities on bodies like Destrum and Corida as well as numerous public space stations, such as the now decommissioned Hadamus Gate Forge, the first Driftgate production centre ever constructed. The small planet of Storm in the system Pioneer was the first colony settled by humanity after expanding beyond the Centrum system. The planet is only barely habitable, with settlements built into rocky mountain ranges and battered by powerful storms. Pioneer's population was fairly low for a long time, but the mass overpopulation crisis currently gripping Tantalus has forced many to take the unpleasant environment of Pioneer as their home. Pioneer orbits a dim yellow star and is the only object of any real interest in its solar system. Rialtus was the second solar system outside of Centrum to be settled by humans, with Rialtus IV representing the first naturally habitable planet ever reached by colonists. Rialtus IV rotates on a small axial tilt, resulting in year-long seasons that maintain a warm climate, beautiful landscapes and pleasant weather, which led the world to become a popular holiday destination in the times before the Great Famine. The primary export of the Rialtus system is Rialton stone wine, with the planet's conditions proving extremely favourable for vineyards yards. Rialtus is also renowned across the cluster for professional spacecraft racing, annually playing host to the Rialton Solar Circuit and contributing many of the most famous and successful racing teams to the sport. Axius is the second most populous world in Tantalus after Centrum. The planet is covered in large cities, separated by alpine mountain ranges. Axius is famous for its courthouses and universities, generally being considered the centre of academia in Tantalus. Axian cities are dotted with extravagant monuments and statues. Axius is one of the few naturally habitable planets in the Tantalus cluster, and is by far the most prosperous of the early colony worlds. During the Frontier War, the Axius system was heavily fortified to prevent the Frontier Union Union from spreading deeper into the Centrum Assembly. This resulted in more battles being fought over Axius than in any other location throughout the war. In 0299 PCU, the Frontier Union constructed their first and only dreadnought, the Arashi Sakara, for the express purpose of breaking the Axius blockade. The resulting fourth battle of Axius proved to be the bloodiest engagement of the war, ending with the destruction of the Sakara and a costly victory for the Assembly. Orbiting a colossal blue gas giant called Valeria, Valeria Cebus is a tiny moon covered entirely in cityscapes and industrial facilities. Unlike Centrum, there is no greenery or bodies of water, as the moon was originally a barren and rocky wasteland. Valeria Cebus is famed for its nightlife, shipping businesses and gambling scene, and is generally seen as one of the less respectable Tantalus worlds. The moon has a high crime rate and plays host to numerous smugglers, pirates and gangsters. The very low humidity of the tiny moon makes static electric shocks and nosebleeds very common among visitors. These sudden nosebleeds can be a lethal choking danger if suffered while asleep, especially when an individual's reactions are dulled by alcohol or drugs. Fatalities caused this way are known by locals as going red, and the effects are often simulated by local gangsters to disguise the bodies of murder victims. Due to the intense heat of Firewatch's red hypergiant sun, the first exploratory force dispatched to the system could not be sent via Driftgate, as the innate inaccuracy of single-gate travel and the size of the star would make it almost impossible to target the area of safe space without overshooting and being disintegrated by the star. Instead, a huge exploratory platform called the Wanderer was built and sent on an almost six-year voyage to the Firewatch system, using only drift drives, the single longest journey undertaken by humans. 
Islands. Upon arrival, the ship spent a further year constructing a drift gate to connect the system to the rest of Tantalus. Firewatch is brightly visible from anywhere in Tantalus, and features some of the most lucrative drift mines and industrial colonies in the cluster. The system is famed for its metals, unconventional artwork, and potent Firewatch whiskey. Following the colonization of Firewatch, the system became something of a cultural project within the Centrum Assembly, with the retired wanderer being converted into an orbital museum, the earliest colonists being celebrated as public figures, and vast amounts of funding being poured into the development of the Firewatch 2 colony. This led to significant unrest within the Frontier Union, who had long suffered due to critically limited resources and living space on their worlds, only to see the new Firewatch colony given such obvious favouritism. This unrest eventually led to a bombing attack on the Wanderer Museum, which destroyed the facility and caused lethal debris strikes on the surface of Firewatch 2, the first in a number of crises that would eventually grow into the Frontier War. The third system reached by human colonists, Keeper's Dance features only a small number of gas giants and no potential colony sites, but does offer a sizeable ore belt rich in useful shipbuilding materials. It was for this reason that Santana Starworks, upon discovering the system, reorganised themselves into Keeper's Dance fleet yards and assembled a massive shipyard facility in the system. In the early years of KDFY, the organisation continued to produce drift gates as they had under their previous name, resulting in the colonisation of the the Axios system. Shortly afterwards, however, the company was stripped of their right to construct drift gates or to carry out settlement efforts, following the apparent loss of a sizeable colony fleet in what is now known as the start of the Great Mauritian Exile. Though most gate construction duties were then handed over to Grafen Gateworks, KDFY remained the premier shipbuilding service in the Tantalus Cluster, designing and producing almost all of the warships used by the Centrum Assembly Defence Forces, as well as the grand majority of publicly sold models prior to the economic collapse of the Great Famine. Home to the heavily terraformed and resource-laden ice planet of Vidara 5, the Vidara system was settled primarily because of the massive drift deposits present on the system's worlds and within its asteroid belts. Following the collapse of the KDFY Gate Building Division, most drift gate construction was handled by Grafen Gateworks. Upon reaching Vidara and claiming its resource deposits, Grafen Gateworks established the Vidara Gate Forge, the largest and most advanced gate building facility ever constructed, whose assembly yards would later produce gates for every system in the Frontier Union and large portions of the Centrum Assembly. Saravis Major is home to the greatest concentration of natural life forms discovered by humans. The planet is covered in thick jungle and utterly teeming with highly dangerous flora and fauna. The atmosphere is highly toxic to humans, but many of the local life forms contain some substances within their biology that can be refined to create valuable medicines. Due to the importance of the medical research performed in this system and the danger of its natural wildlife, Saravis Major is a restricted travel zone under Centrum Assembly law, with only narrow and carefully policed flight paths between the system's gates being available for public access. As the Great Famine began to take hold across the cluster, extensive research was done into the possibility of using Saravan life forms as a food source, but no amount of research could overcome the levels of toxicity present in every plant and animal on the planet. As the farthest system from the centre of Tantalus, Cardaeus Brink is largely untouched by the brightness of the cluster, and itself features only a dim red dwarf star. For this reason, the system was claimed as a construction site for massive space telescopes and other observatory stations intended to examine stars beyond the Tantalus cluster. The system features only a few rocky dwarf planets, but plays host to a number of stations, most famous of which is the sophisticated Carina Observatory, housing the most powerful telescope and scanner system ever constructed. Close to the system's only gate, Cardaeus Terminal was constructed as a large spaceborne settlement and research facility for science teams working on the system's bases. In 0301 PCU, while working on Carina Observatory, renowned astrophysicist Dr. Sadavar Edric was the first to report the appearance of the mysterious nebula known as CDC 41 Gamma. In the time since, Cardaeus Terminal has been placed under his direct control and renamed Gatehouse Station. For the last four years, Gatehouse Station has served as the construction site for the massive Edrix Gate and the staging ground for the exploratory fleet that will set out to CDC 41 Gamma in search of new worlds and resources. 
Thank you for watching. Please remember to follow the link below to check out our announcement for our upcoming original sci-fi drama, The Sojourn.